For AMD's upcoming RDNA 4 launch, the company is in a very different position than the last few generations of its products. With RDNA 2, the RX 6000 series would compete favourably against NVIDIA's high-end GPUs such as the RTX 3080, as well as lower-end products. You could argue that there's more VRAM on AMD, better ray tracing on NVIDIA, but the raster performance would also frequently switch places, so it was very much up to the customer to make the best decision they could. RDNA 4, though, is almost certainly a product dedicated to budget and mid-range gamers looking to snag a good deal. In many respects, RDNA 4 could more mirror what we saw with AMD's Polaris architecture, with cards such as the RX 480 competing favourably with NVIDIA's Maxwell GPUs, including up to the 970 and perhaps even the 980, depending on the title. But when uh, NVIDIA released Pascal, instead RX 480 would be closer in line with the GTX 1060, for example. So in this video, I want to give you guys some updates on RDNA 4's two chips, known as N44 and 48. We're going to focus primarily on the specification, but also touching on the performance and release date information. And while, yes, RDNA 4 is going to be only up to mid-range, they are still very exciting products, and I suspect that they're going to be of interest to a lot of budget-focused gamers. So let's just get into it, shall we? If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I just want to quickly mention the reason I'm not on camera and sound a little off is because I've got, a, unfortunately, a kind of like a cold sinus thing at the moment, which is absolutely sucking, um, but hopefully I'll be back to normal in the next couple of days. But getting on to the actual script, while RDNA 4 was originally intended by AMD to be a product stack which would range from lower end budget offerings, as usual, up to a halo skew, which would be a chiplet design. Essentially, we are looking at two compute dies, and while I've gone more extensively into that subject before, ultimately it doesn't matter. The products were killed off for several reasons. Chiefly, this allows AMD to divert engineering resources, as well as time, to RDNA 5. And RDNA 5 is probably a more important product internally to AMD, because, well, when it releases, it's going to be not only great for gaming and consoles, but also it's going to form the basis of future CDNA architectures. CDNA currently is using Vega. Well, kinda. It's certainly gone under a lot of improvements since, of course, the original release, but ultimately we're going to see the designs kind of converge together. With that said then, RDNA 4 will feature two dies, as I said, N44 as well as N48, N48 being the higher end variant. You can see on screen the specifications that have now been given. 32 workgroup processors, 64 megabytes of infinity cache, 256 bit GDDR6. N44 though is basically, well, the same specifications but cut in half. So 16 workgroup processors, half the amount of infinity cache at just 32 megabytes, and 128 bit GDDR6. I'm told that the die size of the larger um, N48 die is going to be between N23, which is 237 square millimeters, and 33, which is just a smidgen over 200. So we're looking at somewhere, for example, like 220 um, square millimeters. I don't know the die size of N44, but you can just imagine simply with the specifications, it's going to be significantly smaller. Now, I had also put out previous specifications to this, but I think either they were incorrect or 
AMD have changed the memory configuration. I'm putting it on screen anyway because I just think it's important for you guys to see how the specifications have changed and also just for full disclosure that these are what I used to hear and now this is the update. I think that the 32 workgroup processors 64 and 256 GDDR6 are almost certainly correct at this point and obviously it's going to be more than enough to power a GPU which is ultimately going to be somewhere between the 7900 XT and the um, 7900 GRE in terms of performance. Now from what I'm understanding, the clock target is low to mid 3 gigahertz, but of course, we are not looking at final silicon yet, so do take that with a big grain of salt. I've heard that we're looking at up to 265 watt TDP, possibly a little slimmer, um, maybe like 250, 240, something like that. Again, this is for the N48 die. The N44, though, is going to be a little slower, of course, than uh, than the N48, simply because of the specification. But, even so, it's going to be performant enough to basically mean that uh, it's going to be a compelling upgrade solution. For example, if you're still stuck on, like, a um, an RX 5600 or maybe, like, a, an older NVIDIA card, especially if you want to kind of get the benefits of things like mesh shaders which yes there are not exactly a lot of games which feature mesh shading but ultimately we're probably going to see it become a normal thing eventually now another thing that i've been seeing kind of as a rumor on twitter and just kind of floating around is rdna4 having matrix cores i'll talk more about this technology in another video i actually touched on it in an older xbox video maybe like a maybe three, four weeks ago. I don't remember the title of the video, unfortunately. But basically speaking, um, as far as I understand, RDNA 4 does not feature matrix cores, and instead, this is gonna be a feature which is coming to RDNA 5. But I'll talk more about this in another video, um, which is gonna focus only on RDNA 5, simply because it has um, a lot of importance for a number of reasons, not just in terms of gaming, but also uh, the data center applications. I also think that uh, the consoles are also going to benefit from this. And yes, I did say gaming, but I meant PC gaming originally. So there we go. But as for the pricing, well, let's just say the prices haven't been finalized yet. I suspect N48 is going to be cheaper than the 7900 GRE, but I would certainly not get super excited. Personally, I would be very happy if it ended up costing like 500 bucks but um i've also heard n44 is going to be like mid 200 us dollars maybe even like down to 199 however the market at the moment as most of you know is absolutely screwed and die costs are going up and memory is actually getting more expensive in some instances so we'll just have to wait and see i um I do imagine, however, that if AMD could release these parts, and again, let's just roughly say N44 is like 150, you know, square millimeters, you could presume that they're going to be able to get, you know, the cards out into the market for a good price. But yeah, I guess it's also going to depend heavily upon that competition um, because that's ultimately the confusing thing because the release date. Um, I was hearing some early reports that we're going to see these cards uh, on store shelves by about mid this year. And this doesn't seem to be true anymore. A couple of sources have told me that uh, we're not going to be seeing these at Computex. Computex, as you probably know, is going to be Zen 5. There's going to be extensive um, you know, demos and you know, revealing of all the Zen 5 stuff at Computex. And probably also the APUs as well, such as Strix Point. Although I think Sarlacc, which is the, um, the Halo products based on Strix Point, I think they're probably going to come later. Or maybe we're going to see like hints of them at uh, Computex. But the release is probably going to be like later. We'll have to wait and see on that. But um, my personal guess is that Computex, we're going to see just a hint of RDNA 4 at absolute most, and the GPUs will launch at a later date. I've heard tentatively late Q3 or even somewhere around Q4. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how that shapes up because 
Not only um, have, of course, we've seen the 7900 uh, GRE recently being launched in new regions at around 550 US dollars, I believe. We also have the fact that these uh, N31 SKUs, the highest end ones like the XTX, are simply going to be faster than the um, N48, unless it really does surpass expectations. Uh, maybe, in, maybe in ray tracing, the uh, RDNA 4 products will be decently faster. And the second point is that we also have, of course, uh, battle, yeah, uh, battle Mage from Intel. Now, what success Battle Mage actually has on the market, it's going to be, well, <laughs> let's just say I can see it going both ways. Ultimately, the thing with Intel and Battle Mage is that it doesn't just have to be a good product. The marketing is going to be definitely something they're going to have a an uphill battle with. With that said, um, I think the drivers and all of the positive stuff they've done with the drivers is definitely getting some, um, let's just say, some goodwill in the eyes of even folks who don't own the cards but are kind of like in the uh, you know hardcore PC gaming market. You know, it's always good to see what uh, Intel have done. So I will be extremely interested to see what this marketing strategy is for RDNA 4. I think that AMD are going to probably be very aggressive with the pricing. Um, so I think like 200 bucks would be absolutely phenomenal with N44. However, the market is just so wrecked at the moment. Like you would have to say that theoretically that could be a thing. But um, yeah, let's just say that we've been... Uh, <laughs> Not exactly having the best deals with graphics cards over the past few generations, so goodness knows. With that said, guys, I'm going to let you go. Um, apologies again for not being on camera and for my voice being, well, let's just say not ideal. I'm going to let you go, and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.